guys, welcome back to my YouTube. Today I'm going to show you how I edit my Instagram photos using an app called Lightroom. I'm going to show you on the Mac today just so I can screen record it and talk to you whilst I'm doing something, but I use the app on my phone. So it's free on your phone and you've got to pay for it if you want to use it on your Mac. Um, but yeah, there is a free subscription that you can have on your phone which gives you basically everything that you could need, um, but there is an option to have more things if you want to pay the monthly subscription, but I use the free one. So this is the first one I'm going to use to show you just because there's a human in there and a dog in there. Um, I know that a lot of you are going to come from our Instagram and be dog related, um, but this can be used for humans as well. So I thought I'd show you how I like to change my skin and things like that. So yeah, um, I'll just briefly talk you through Lightroom in general, just all of the different functions that you can use. And then I'll show you at the end specifically what I do to my photos because on our Instagram, lots of you always ask, do I use filters? Do I use presets? And I don't, I just save my own presets if I like a specific setting on a photo. Um, so I create it, create it as a preset on Lightroom and then I'll add it to another photo once it's been created. Um, I'll still make little adjustments to other photos because the lighting will always be different. I may want something darker or lighter than in a previous photo. So I don't always use the exact same thing on a photo. So you have light, colour, effect, detail, and then these two I don't really use, but you can have a play around with them. I'll just talk you through all the things that I use and the things that I know how to use them. Um, here you can also adjust things, you can rotate and things like that just to straighten it if it's not in the right positioning. Uh, the healing brush, so for example if you didn't want the lamp in the background you can get rid of it. I don't use this to be honest, um, but I know people use it if there are people in the background in say a field and they just want the picture to have the specific people in there and you can make them disappear basically. Um, this brush I do use, so you can set a setting, that made no sense, you can make your hair go lighter or darker or if you want your eyes to be glossy but you don't want to change the settings for the rest of the photo. I was gonna show you how I do this as well, um, but for some reason the Mac is being annoying because it's a bit old so it's not letting me show you because it'll crash but yeah you can basically go in select the area and it'll highlight in red um, and then you can adjust the highlights the shadows the clarity all those sorts of stuff and again yeah I don't really use these options um, but there's lots of different things that you can play around with to create something that you enjoy for your photos so we'll start with light because this is the first thing I always go for when editing a photo so the exposure is very po uh, powerful so I only ever go as far as say 0 0.60 but this photo is already very bright so I'm going to go to maybe 30 and then I usually always bring down the highlight all the way. Contrast will depend on the photo. I'm not going to use it today, but it just gives you a bit more depth into a photo. It does change the colouring a little bit sometimes though, so this is why I stay away. Shadows I usually bring all the way up, but today I'm not going to go all the way just because I'm in there as well. And then whites I don't usually touch, but again, you can play around with it if you like. Bring it down, bring it up, makes it a bit brighter. The blacks, um, it does slightly different to the shadows, so it works at a different kind of shadow. Um, so say for my hair, you can see there, there you go. But yeah, I use the shadow, if I'm in there, a little bit to make my hair brighter, um, just because photos in general, say like a camera iPhone, it changes the colours and the lighting naturally anyway so even if you don't edit a photo that's not what you would look like in person because iPhone have their own settings already on a camera so yeah and then colour is what I use the most this is what I use to create like the look or the feel of my photos say on our grid there's lots of like yellow orange white tones all that so the first thing that I'll usually do and I don't do this to every photo but I increase the temperature with the yellow colour. It's not going to stay like this, don't worry. Then you have the tint for the green or the purple, the blue, the vibrance, you can change the saturation. I personally don't, but they're there if you want to. They're used on most photo editing apps. So yeah, you probably know what they are. Then I go straight into the yellow. I usually bring this... Oh, it's going to let me. That's what I meant by the Mac being a pain. I usually bring it all the way down so instead of it being so yellow it kind of creates a bit of a pinky tone and then 
I will bring the saturation all the way down and mix it a bit whiter and then again just brightening it up a little bit. I'll just show you the before and after at the moment. So with the things that I've been playing around with as well, it kind of get rid gets rid of a little bit of the dark circles under my eyes and this is why I like to brighten a bit, play around with the shadows and things. Then I'll go with the orange and this is how I change the colour of my skin. So I always make it darker, but obviously that's not my skin colour, it doesn't look realistic. So then I bring the saturation down and make it look a bit, a bit more real. Then I use the red to adjust the colour of my lips because that just doesn't look right. It looks a bit more orange instead of pink. So I do always try to compare my lips to the original photo. So I'll bring the hue down, which will make it a bit pinker, red. Honestly, the more you practice with these, you'll have a bit more of an understanding of what they do when you go to either end of the bar. Um, I'll bring them a bit darker, just so they're more realistic because they're not that bright. And then the saturation down again, so they're a little bit faded. So you'll see they're a bit closer to the original photo now than what they were. So that's all I'll really do for the colour for this photo. If there's like grass or something, I'll go in and I'll use the green. I usually take the green all the way up there. I just like the colour. And then bring the saturation down. And then depending on the photo, how bright it is or dark it is, then I'll change this one. Same as blues for the sky or the sea, things like that. Pinks for flowers usually, purples for clothes, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, that's a really fun one to play around with. So next up is effects. So I usually bring the texture jack down just a little bit, just so I can make my hair look a bit softer. Um, and then I will go in with the clarity. Just a little tiny bit, just so that it makes the photo look a bit more realistic so this is the goal I do like it to look noticeably edited or filtered or whatever you want to call it just because that's what makes a nice aesthetic on a feed if you want an aesthetic um, and then dehaze again just to give it that pop and make it you know again realistic so I'll show you the before and after so if you want to save it as a preset you just go into your presets click the three little buttons and then create preset and you can save it here name them whatever you like apply them to new photos and then just make little tweaks so yeah i hope you found it useful let me know what you think if you have any questions about lightroom leave them in the comments and if you have any requests for future videos let me know as well because i'm making a list and i'll try and get them out once a week uh, once a week but yeah have a lovely day guys and thank you for watching